Hello everyone and welcome to the final day of the BFI Future Film Festival 2021. My name is Alex and I'm the festival programmer and producer and today we'll be discussing what makes the perfect pitch and what TV commissioners are looking for. Um, and the host of today's session is Harriet Williams. She is the executive of development of the BFI Young Audiences Content Fund, uh, responsible for assessing applications to the development fund and also overseeing uh, the development of awarded programs. But just before I hand over to Harriet, I wanted to let you know how today's session will run. So we have our um, entire festival team working behind the scenes today. Me and my colleague Fiona will be managing the chat box. Um, so if you have any questions about the festival, our upcoming events today or the award ceremony tonight, or maybe more generic questions about the BFI or the BFI Film Academy, then please pop those questions in the chat and Fiona and I will um, be answering them throughout. Um, however, if you have any questions about pitching for television, questions for Harriet or one of our panelists, then please pop those in the Q&A box on the bottom of your screens. And uh, my colleague um, Kieran is managing that box and will devote the last 15 minutes of the session to your questions and we'll try to get through as many of them as we can. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we've set up a Facebook networking group for all of you guys. So feel free to join that um, and share um, links to your work and, and social handles there. Um, and as the last thing, I wanted to say that today's session is being recorded and we'll upload this recording to the BFR YouTube channel after the festival in two or three weeks time. Um, the best way to find out when this recording is available online is to follow the BFI Film Academy Twitter channel and we'll post a little message there once the edit is ready if you want to rewatch it again. And now without further ado, I'll hand over to Harriet to introduce our lovely panelists to you. Enjoy the session. Thanks, Alex. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'd just like to thank the Future Film Fest team in the first instance for putting this event on and being so helpful. Um, I'm not just saying that because they're my colleagues. Um, as Alex said, I'm the development executive for the BFI's uh, Young Audiences Content Fund. Um, and part of my role is supporting our projects through development and hoping them, hope, hopefully getting them to a position where they're ready to pitch to commissioners. Um, so my hope for you this session is to help you sort of understand the process of pitching a bit better. Um, I recognize that it can be quite, you know, a daunting thing, but um, yeah, we just want to sort of demystify the process, uh, give you an idea of what to expect and just feel more confident in your ability to pitch. Um, so I'm very lucky to be joined by some very knowledgeable panelists. Um, I think Carl is actually just running a little bit late, but I'm sure he'll be here in a moment. Um, so I'll start by introducing um, Hajit Shoka. He, Hajit is the commissioning editor in the Channel 4 Factual team. Hi, Hajit. Um, recent commissions. Hello. Hi. Um, recent commissions including Is COVID Racist, Hitched at Home, and The Year That Changed Love. Before this, Hajit worked in factual programming for over 15 years, working as series producer and series director, uh, director on multiple primetime series. Um, in his current role, he commissions across a spectrum of factual programming from multi-part observational documentary series to headline graphic singles and specialist factual programmings. Hi, Haji. Thanks Hello. for coming. Um, and then we also have Laura Jackson. Oh. I believe. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you are. Um, a graduate of National Film and Television television school with a background in West End Theatre, Laura worked in the acquisitions team at Studio Canal UK, working across the acquisition of companies including Hello High Water, You're Never Really Here and The Big Sick. Laura has since formed Cape Tim Productions, her slate includes Cheer Up, which received development funding by the BFI's Young Audiences Content Fund, and Pride Land, which was selected for the Torino Series Lab 2020, and she was recently awarded a John Braeburn Award in support of her producing slate. Um, Hi, Laura. I was just checking to see if Carl's here. Carl, Carl, are you here? Well, I'll just introduce him when he does arrive. Mm, yeah, he'll be here soon. Um, cool. So thank you both for taking the time. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that all of us have been on both sides of the pitching table, both mm. receiving pitches, giving feedback um, and pitching ourselves. Um, and between us, we've um, worked across both scripted and factual and film and TV, though this is of course a TV session. Mm -hmm. um, 
So how I've broken it up is that we're sort of going to go through it from before the pitch and getting ready. How do you even get through the pitch? Um, not in terms of like transportation. Um, and then the pitch itself and then afterwards. Um, so I'm going to start with Haji, if you could explain, um, I guess, how somebody would even get the opportunity to pitch to you or a commissioner. Okay, so uh, we at Channel 4, we do not commission from individuals. So we will only ever commission from independent production companies. Right. So that's the first thing to always be mindful of. So often I do get emails from um, filmmakers or producers, you know, who were working on their own and they've got an idea and we we just wouldn't we would never ever publish from one single person now what we might do is somebody might send me an email and go and I really like you know I maybe know of them as that they've already got a bit of a track record in the industry or I really like the idea so what we might do is pair them up with a company uh, that we think is the right home for them or suggest a few companies but ultimately I think that's the first thing to realize it when it comes to channel four and television we would never commission from one single individual and uh, and there's there's loads of um, there's many ways um, like somebody can get the opportunity to pitch for us. For starters, we have the page on the Channel Four website called Four Producers, and <clears throat> therefore in every single genre, so factual, who I work for, entertainment, comedy, drama, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all have a little sub page, and they right. talk about all the needs on that page. So we uh, there's two things we kind of commission into. There's obviously Channel 4, there's obviously the channels, so Channel 4, E4, More 4, and there's uh, slots, linear slots, so things like, eight. that means 8pm, 9pm, 10pm, and each slot has a different audience and has a different need, and again, it's all outlined in there, and then there's obviously our genres, in factual, we're quite a broad church, so we do everything from uh, observational documentaries through to uh, kind of single documentaries right through to kind of specialist factors so history, uh, science, adventure, arts, etc. So the first, first thing I would always say, and also the other thing is there's a wide range of commissioners who all commission into different sort of genres and we're all listed and all our emails are listed on the four, web, four producers website. So, so therefore in terms of getting it up, getting to pitch to us, you could just drop us, I mean in theory you could just drop us an email and people do, but yeah. what I would do, but what I would do is really think about what is your idea? What, why does it speak to chan the Channel Four audience? How does it speak to Channel Four's values and what we what our aims are? And why why should it work for Factual? I think is the key thing. Now, when people pitch to me, I don't expect them to have reams and reams of paper and everything outline because sometimes it can just be a, a top line it can well be what I mean by top line is it's a few paragraphs describing describing the, uh, the project but often people do come with lots of treat lots of details in their treatments but basically I think it's about selling your idea to us and why like like I said why you think it's home is at channel four right great thank you mm. um Laura, for people who don't make it as easy as Channel 4 seem to, have you got any tricks for making those connections? Um, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, if it's, it, it, can, it can be hard when you don't, like you said, when there isn't that kind of, that welcoming landing page with all of the email addresses lined mm -hmm. up and a set of kind of what you're looking for. And um, so sometimes you have to do a little bit more digging <laughs> and, uh, and uh, and I would say also that um, that even if you can't get FaceTime with the big boss, uh, especially when you're starting out, befriend the assistants, befriend the mm -hmm. um, the kind of the more junior members of of the commissioning team, or if you're kind of pitching to production companies of, of the kind of development team, because the big boss might not have time to, to, to meet with you or to kind of um, to grab a coffee or whatever it might be, but the assistant might. They probably know as much uh, as their boss. If and not more. If, if, not, not, more. if not more. And, uh, and regardless, they're probably going to be a bit more open about sharing that info and, and, and that insight with you anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and, 
and they are the gatekeepers as well. It's kind of, it's worth remembering that before David Heyman read the Harry Potter series, his receptionist or his assistant, whoever it was, read it first and said, David, I think you should take a look at this. So it's, and, and those people aren't going to be assistants forever. And I'm now in a, in a situation where the, the, the assistants that I've been friends with for five, six, seven years are now all stepping up um, to decision-making positions. And so, um, yeah, my network, you kind of, you, yeah, befriend, befriend the people all around you and you, you kind of all step up in the industry together. And now the idea of pitching to, um, to certain commissioners isn't nearly as daunting as it once was because I've been friends with that person for, for mm. five years. And um, yeah, we used, to, we used to go dancing on a Friday night uh, in Soho. So it's, it's a different sort of relationship. So play the long game. Um, because right. it is a long game and even like and, and that's in terms of hopefully you're going to be in this indus industry for a very very long time but also lots of projects can take years to get off the ground so putting the putting the legwork at, at all levels and it will pay dividends in the end um, but also in terms of in, in, in terms of establishing connections Haji already said it in terms of do your homework um, yeah and, uh, and that's kind of doing your homework, not only kind of before you meet somebody, but before you email them. It makes such a difference when you're, cold, especially if you're cold emailing mm -hmm. an email address that you found on the internet, to be able to open and say, oh, Haji, I saw that show you worked on last year. I love this about it. Um, it just, it just sets a whole different tone for the, for the, for the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a small industry, so having establishing common ground and commonality um, makes can make a big, big difference. And it's the difference between Haji hopefully reading my email and Haji <laughs> thinking, "Oh, what nonsense is this?" And I'll get to that later. Yeah, and I think that's worth. I think that's a really good point, Laura. Which is, you know, commissioning editors for whatever genre get flooded with emails, really do. And you know. I, I, I kind of speak for all my colleagues when I say we do try and get back to everyone. It does take a while, but we do try. And and what makes your, what makes your idea stand out is going to be that. It's going to be how does it speak to the channel you're commissioning to, uh, putting a pitch into, whether it's BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Netflix, whatever you, what have you. Um, and, uh, and it's about also thinking about what you've done as well. And I think that's, you know, we do... At, you know, at Channel 4, one of our priorities and one of our, you know, remit is to is to nurture new talent, right? And this is what this whole great festival is all about, is the next generation. And and our and our job is to nurture that talent. And it's about how do we do it? Now, we have like a, a first-time director strand, which is called First Cut. But again, you know, look, you know, that is about people who maybe had a few years experience, have been building themselves up from like researcher, AP, uh, producer it, often there used to be times when they some film graduates would come in but again they didn't have a bit of work in in the industry they'd maybe worked on a few productions and that our factual had made and and you know brought, had a bit of a reputation had a bit of experience and therefore we're there to help you know give them that next step up so again it's one advice I would give to everyone and I say this to you know whether it's aspiring filmmakers right through to just producers who are working in the industry which is really think about the programs you want to work on what we watch a lot of television watch so much channel 4 content and think what is it what is it that program that I like and and you might go you might think actually I really like the way 24 hours in a and E's is made and the way they tell those stories craft and how they craft it well then contact the exec on 24 hours in A&E and flatter them, right? Because flattery gets you a long, long way. It works for me, right? Find them, and like Laura said, find them and say you want to work on that program and say and say why you love it. And then you might go, well, I really like, I really liked um, Undercover Police. Uh, you know, that was on this week on Channel 4 at nine o'clock on Monday. Well, who's the company that made it? You know, contact them and, and tell them why you, why you liked it. And it's the same thing, you know, it could be it could be Channel 4 documentaries, it could be story bills that you love on, on, on the BBC. Again, who are the companies that have made it? And just do a bit of research because, you know, the, the thing about this industry is, you know, obviously I think it's important for people, for us to kind of really nurture that next generation. 
but also a lot of it is luck and it's about just really kind of keeping that in your mind and just pushing yourself and thinking about where that what's that next project you want to do and being sometimes being quite strategic about it and therefore when you do pitch to a commissioner you've already got a bit of a, leg, a bit of a head start great thank you um so i guess for these how did you get people coming in or is it all through your online web website is it all do you get in-person pictures as well do you get people wanting to come in and pitch in person well, obviously at the moment no no of, yeah uh, <laughs> let's no, imagine course, people want to do this again yeah look i think what would what do you know what of course it's great and i think normally what happens is when you've got companies who established or, or individuals who have started developing a relationship on email then of course we meet for a coffee and we talk about ideas and we talk about you know what i'm looking for what stories are kind of i'm feeling passionate that we want to tell so that does happen i think what's been great I think one of the one of the only good things that have come out of the last year or so because of what's happened with COVID is is actually how this whole thing on Zoom has made everything equal. So before, what would happen is you were based in an office, may that be London, Leeds, Glasgow, and producers would come to you or you might go to an office. Whereas now, I, the, what I say to everyone who pitches to me is, Send me, send me a brief outline of what's what's interest, what you love about this project, and then if I if I see something in it, we can just jump on one of these Zoom calls really quickly. So we're not waiting six weeks, we're not waiting, you know, two months for us to have regular routines. And then if I don't like that idea or I don't think it's right for me, then I'll just let you know straight away via email. And I think, and I think it just levels the playing field a bit, and yeah. it also it makes it less daunting. You know what I mean? I remember going into off into Channel Four at Horse Bay Road, and being absolutely petrified of going in there, right? And it was scary. And you're sat in a room, and you know this man or woman would come in, and you you would have ten minutes to pitch your idea. Whereas now you just log onto a Zoom or a Teams call, and you can just have a quick chat, and it it feels a lot more equal. What do you think, Laura? Oh, complete. It's I it's um I completely agree, and and there's something. Uh, pitching on zoom is like an is a whole is an art form in and of itself and it, in yeah. some ways it can be hard because you don't get you it's you can't read the room in quite the same mm. way um but you're right that it's much easier and quicker to you're much more likely to get somebody's time if you're asking for them to hop on zoom for 20 minutes yeah. rather than um yeah carve carve out carve out a whole section of their day to go meet you in a coffee shop or whatever it is yeah so it, is, it has been a leveler and it's opened doors in, 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 in that respect, which is great. Um, and yeah, the vast majority of the pitches that I've, I've done and given, because I think you see, you see pitching in movies and it is that, it's the big boardroom and it's the, the row of steely faced stoic executives mm. that, who like don't want to give you anything. Um, but in reality, every pitch I've ever given has been, has been kind of, much more intimate much more kind of personal um and I think that's partly because you, I think I think when you're pitching you're pitching your idea but you're also pitching yourself you want to see if 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 you're going to kind of if it's going to be a good relationship kind of partner mm -hmm. to partner as well and whether whether this person is somebody that you're going to want to work with um for the foreseeable future so um Although I will say just before lockdown, I was preparing um, my first ever kind of big stage pitch. Um, I, was, I, was going, I was heading to Series Mania with, with the project that we're developing with Torino Series Lab. And that was going to be kind of the, the stage, the big screen, you've got 10 minutes, all lights on you, go. Um, which is a completely different art form and honestly, um, when I'm put on, if I'm talking to more than three people, then I am very likely to get stage fright. I'm very lucky and I'm kind of not looking at the participant number on the Zoom. Mm -hmm. I'm pretending I'm just talking to you guys and it's fine. If I knew that I was, if, if I was addressing a, a, a big room of people, honestly, my mind just goes blank. Um, but I know that. And so I prepare, 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 prepare. And it's partly, um, if you've only got five, 10 minutes, then it's 
you want to make sure that you've covered everything that you need to cover. Um, and it's impossible to be succinct if, if you're, if you're ill-prepared. So if I know I've got a set period of time and I have to cover everything off, I will, I'll, I'll have scripted that pitch and I will have rehearsed it to the mirror. And obviously you don't want, you don't want it to seem robotic, but, um, but also you don't want to be caught like a deer in headlights and, and have nothing to say. So, um, I'm jealous of people who can walk into a boardroom and just like smash it. But the reality <laughs> is for me that I, I can't do that. I, and I know that I can't do that. So I, I just, I practice, I really like practice a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really key. And I think, um, you know, just be robust with your idea, like actually get people to talk, talk to other people about it because they'll find something in it that you haven't thought of or they'll find a flaw in it or a problem with it or a concern with it or even something that just needs a bit more talking through right because so and, and you know like while people pitch to me then I'll be pitching those ideas to my boss or to Carl at E4 or Ian Katz at Channel 4 and you can you know every pitch I've ever done to them they've always had that one question that I've never I have that stumbled me so you know it is it's always really, really important just to go through your idea, go through, like really break it down and just think about, you know, who are you pitching it to? Why, why now? Why, why should this, why should this broadcaster or this streamer or whoever you're pitching to give you money to make this program? That, that's what's always going to be, you know, one of the questions I always get asked is, well, what, who's going to watch this? And you've got to think about that. Who are you making this program for? I think a lot of people come to us because they're making programs because they're making them for themselves. And actually, that's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It's got to, you've got to think about who are you making this program for? And it's got to be the audience. You know, if a program, an audience which is, a, a, the audience watching at 8 p.m. is very different to the audience that catches up on all four and you really have to think about that like who is going to watch this program and why would that audience care about your idea is really key yeah Laura for that pitch were you sort of what was your focus was it getting across the story or the talent on board um it was so I was pitching it alongside the the writer director um, and I think with TV, with, with scripted TV, uh, where we are, it is, it's, it's a world in which the showrunner is, is key, right? So getting especially right. his personality across and why, and, and, but also mine, and why the two of us were the right people to be telling this story mm. um, was key. It was, it's a dark comedy idea. And I think that when you're, you have to be kind of aware of the tone and actually that your your kind of your pitch has to uh, we, we weren't like telling jokes but we had to kind of convey the tone in the tone of our pitch as well it had yeah. to seem kind of a bit mm -hmm. wry and um capture the spirit of the show and then I mean in five minutes you don't have time and actually the the biggest the the biggest mistake you can make is getting stuck in a in a play-by-play -play of the plot uh mm -hmm. because uh, it gets boring really quickly and um, and you don't have time anyway. So you've really got to focus on the bigger picture. Like Hajit said, it's it's the, why why does a story need telling? Who, um, and and who's who's going to watch it? And and kind of you need to focus on the, on the bigger picture stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think what you say about sort of trying to get across that tone in what, what you say, like whether you're pitching your pitching in person or you're just delivering a pitch doc, mm. if you say, oh, this is a comedy and then it's a really dry yeah. document, yeah. people will be like, is it, is it really? Is it really, yeah. Um, Hajit, you said for, you know, with, with, with people pitching factual programming, you're happy with just sort of a top sheet, but just sort of like, people come with more material than that is it the more the better or do you like to see it in early doors I think it, look, it's different horses for courses right it's different ideas now we I've had um I've had people um for example my first ever commission at channel four wasn't even it was just a, it was something on the zoom it was just an idea and it, mm -hmm. and it was like and I think 
like key to key for me is can you t can you sum up your idea in a few sentences because it also helps you focus what the idea is and and literally they just sent it to me in a meeting and I was like and it was like oh you know the the development producer was like oh I was meant to get married this summer it's obviously been cancelled because of COVID so many weddings are being cancelled wouldn't it be great if Channel Four got loads of Channel Four stars and we staged someone's wedding in their garden I was like great great idea would you just would you send it? To, would you write it up over the weekend as a one pager, and I'll send it to my boss, Danny? I mentioned it to Danny on the phone that night. Uh, the next morning, literally Saturday morning, they were good. They said they'd love it, and they were going to commission wow. us. And but that is really rare, and that was obviously okay. a product of being at COVID and things being put on. So that's not the norm. That is definitely not the norm, right? Yeah. But but what but what I mean, but therefore my and my second commission, which was is uh, is COVID racist, that took nearly six four months of development before we got there before Ian Katz could green lit it so look, it's different it could, it's all about the idea it's all about what the idea is saying what what slot you're going for and and look the trouble with anything in development and I'm sure Laura will agree with this is you've got to always remember 99 of your ideas 99 percent of your ideas are never going to get to see the light of date sadly because and that doesn't mean because they're not great ideas that could be because there's already something been commissioned or there's something similar was made is some similar has been made by another broadcaster or do you know what it's just not the right time at the moment so so i think it's it's always you always have to remember that and i think so therefore for me when i say a top she is just can you describe your idea in about three or four paragraphs is what I would say top sheet is. And that's going to be what the idea is, the why now, what's distinctive about it. And I think if we can see that in this in a sheet, then great. A lot of people do get really passionate about their ideas, right? And have worked really hard on them. And we get we get presented four, five, 10, 15 pages of information about it. Again, brilliant. And it kind of really makes things clear and it kind of and that could be everything from what each sample episode would look like to the contributors they want on it to where they're going to film, you know, so it all depends on the idea, Harriet, it all depends yeah. on what that idea is. And again, going back to what Laura said, the, the longer your relationship with your commissioner is and how long you've known them kind of the, the formality and the informality of your kind of communication develops so if you if I've just got to know you you might send me treatments because you want to show that you're robust and you know it but if I've been so I've got companies now who I've been working with over the last year who just literally send me a text going Hajj would you be interested in this or send me an email going we've just had we've just come across this story what do you think is this something you'd be interested in but again it's your it's your relationship you have with that commissioner you know, if somebody out of the blue just sent me that, I'd be like, mm, I, don't know, I don't know who you are. I don't know <laughs> what you've done. So I'm probably going to reply going, probably not a priority for us because I don't know anything about you. But if you, if it's the first time you contacted me and you go, oh, I saw you on that panel. I've been thinking about this idea. This is why I think it's right for China 4. We'd love to work with this, this company and this company. And, you know, I really admire this exec. Would, it be, would you have time for a quick chat? I'm more likely to go, yeah, actually, there's something about this person I really like. Let's have a let's have a twenty minute Zoom. Okay, great. And and I guess sort of you know if there is anything you feel you need to see more of, whether it be I guess research or like you know um, yeah. sizzle reel or something, is that something you'd then want to yeah. be involved with editorially? So so there's two yeah of course so there's the, usually what happens is so somebody will a company would email me an idea whether that be a few paragraphs or a twenty page treatment right and I might go do you know what there's something really really I like about this let's have a, let's have a chat I have a chat and then I think yeah I really you know what this I could definitely see this on Channel Four I really want to know more so I would say to, we would then work out what the next step is so it could be a treatment if the treatment hasn't already been written or it could be because of the idea or the tone or the style we want to film it or even the characters I would then speak to my the team my colleagues and my boss Danny Horan and we go look I really like this let's get some development fund for it and what that means is we give that company a certain amount of money to create something to deliver something and that could be like I said everything from a proof of concept take right through to doing some casting right through to 
write this huge treatment to write the schedule and the budget and again that's why you need the infrastructure of a company around you because yeah you know you need someone to look after the budget I can't I know to this day I would still never be able to do a budget or write a schedule right so you need someone to help you with that you need to think about you might want someone to film that tape for you or cut it so you just so we would give you some funded debt potentially we might not we might just pitch that idea straight to Ian Katz but Usually what happens is we try and give you a bit of funded dev. And then once that's delivered and we're happy, we then pitch it to Ian Katz. Uh, now that process can take anything from two months to two years, right? It can be, it's as long as the piece of string is, but ultimately what you should all, there's two things I always think is really important when, whether with that initial email is what is your idea, you know, and all those things that come with that idea, but also your passion for it. You know, you've got to feel passionate about it because if it's just about an idea, but you don't care, it's going to really shine through. But you want to, you have to want to make that program. You have to want to care about it. You want, and honestly, when I see people who are really passionate about their ideas, I get really excited. And and ultimately, what we're doing with, as a broadcaster and with the with the person is we're developing a relationship right we i i'm going to work with that per person and vice versa and if we don't care about the idea or if you're not you know it's just it's going to be a it's going to be a loveless marriage right is yeah. what it's going to be so you really really have to both sides have to feel passionate and and you know passion passion is infectious right if i'm passionate about it then i know that other person's going to be about it and vice versa and that's what you want that's what you should be really aiming for Okay, great. Um, just on material, Laura, what do you find people are looking for in terms of scripted content? Um, so I think I, well, I think Harjeet's point about can you can you summarize it is, is, yeah. is a really good is a really good question to ask yourself. Like it's all very well and good having a 10 page series Bible. But if you can't sum up what the idea is in a few lines, then generally it points to a a flaw in 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 the idea that there's, there's a lack of clarity there. Um, so I I, I generally because I I mean I I'm somebody who I guess when commissioners hear from me or, or kind of potential partners hear from me, um, I I don't have a huge track record, so I've got to be careful with how much kind of of, of somebody's time I assume. Um, so I always start with 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 less or at least kind of um, my my intro kind of my, 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 the email that I send kind of will have a very kind of brief summary of what it is because um, because as Haji said there's sometimes there's a very quick yes no we've got something like that on the slate already it's not so it's not quite right um, and I'd rather get that no kind of sooner rather than later. So, and, and actually that going in with that mentality of um, almost anti expecting a no, it's almost certainly going to be a no. Um, and then every now and then you get like a yes, or even just a maybe, and it feels like a, a win. <laughs> um, but so I, I, yeah, we'll kind of, we'll try and give a summary of it in, in my kind of, in my email so that they don't have to, it doesn't, they don't feel like they've got to read 10 pages to even get a sense of what the idea is. Yeah. Um, so, and then in terms of materials down the line, like you want to have everything ready so that if there's a bite, then you're like, okay, great. Here's the series Bible. Here's the sizzle reel. Here's, um, here's the pilot script. And starting out, I think more often than not in scripted, you are, when you don't have a track record, you're probably going to have to have a script. Right. Um, or at least if you if you don't have the pilot script yet, you probably need a very good writing sample that is in a similar sort of a, a tone or a world or a whatever it is. So you can you can sh you, you, you show that you've not only got the idea, but you've got the skills to kind of to pull it off. Um, so before I go out, I will probably I'll have I will have kind of a one or two pager. Um, generally that's the last thing that I write like I would or maybe I write it first and then I'll put then I then I'll kind of put together the series bible and the pilot script and mm. then I'll come back to that one pager and it's probably completely changed um but that's always a really nice thing to come back to and make sure that it's still that that, that core idea that you're still kind of you're still conveying it kind of in in the best way possible 
Um, but then I, I will start by um, with, a, with a little kind of one paragraph summary in my email. Maybe I'll attach the, the two pager. Um, but I personally, I don't want, I don't over, I don't want to bombard somebody. I, if, if they like the idea, fab, I've got the materials ready to send. Um, but, but if it's not, I don't want them to feel like, like an email from Laura is always a chore and they've got an evening of reading ahead before <laughs> they can even kind of get back to me meaningfully. Um, so yeah, I have everything ready, but I, I kind of, I, I, I don't want to overwhelm somebody. I want you want to mm. they're gonna I, if, they, if they like the idea fab let's have a much longer conversation but if not then um then then yeah that's then then I don't want yeah I don't I just don't want an email from Laura to feel like a chore like a, like a like a bit of a headache <laughs> yeah no well they never are if you were curious <laughs> um You've currently got a project in with the Trino Series Lab. Was mm. that helpful in getting those pitch, pitching materials together? Yeah, definitely. And part, so part of the reason that I applied to Torino Series Lab, so I worked, like you said, in your very lovely intro, I worked in theatre and then in the film industry. Um, and the idea, the TV show that I'm developing with Torino Series Lab actually started life as a film, feature film project. Right. Um, and we've been wrestling with it for a little while, myself and the writer-director, um, and we'd had some interest in it, but we'd never quite, we, we'd never quite been able to crack it, we felt, because we never quite knew what the end was, <laughs> um, which we thought was like a fundamental flaw with this film. And it was a flaw with the film, because it, but it pointed to the fact that probably we had a TV series on our hands as opposed to a, as opposed to a film. Um, so we applied to Torino Series Lab for a couple of reasons. Um, partly because we genuinely, we felt like we wanted the, the tuition in terms of, of development for television as opposed to development for TV, sorry, as opposed to development for film. Um, and, and I'm so glad we did that because as far as um, I can tell, they're, they're completely different disciplines. Um, so uh, yeah, and obviously the fact that we didn't have an ending was sort of was sort of perfect and, and we'd stumbled upon, upon an idea that was kind of in its DNA it was kind of it was returnable and there was scope and there was space um but it took kind of it we had to sort of shake our heads off a little bit because working in feature film development you're kind of you're constantly looking for ways to kind of close the narrative and bring it to a to a satisfying conclusion um and you obviously you need kind of elements of that in, in, in TV series. You need, it needs to be satisfying, but it needs to be satisfying in a way that is sort of full of infinite potential. Um, so, and once we kind of, once we got that, it was so freeing and so exciting creatively. And we could really focus on this world that we were creating and these characters that we were, we were populating it with. Um, so it was super, super valuable. And then it was also useful in terms of um, so Torino Series Lab, they're based out of Italy, but you get, um, we were the only UK project the year that we were there, and there are projects from all around the world. And so getting that international global perspective, even at that kind of very early development stage was really, really useful, because I think the TV landscape is like, it's, it's, it's changed a lot, and the bar is so high, kind of creatively in terms of what audiences expect um, and what that costs to make, to pull off, that actually um, you're unlikely to be able to fully finance your project with, with just one commissioner. So to be thinking early on about how your, how your show has kind of broader appeal and, and is gonna work in different markets um, is, is also really useful. So it was great to be developing it in that sort of a, an international environment. Um, was that your, have I answered your question? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, picking so up on what picking up on what Laura just said as well, like it's really key to think about that for Channel Four as well. You know, um, we Channel Four launched a, a, their new Future Four strategy last year, late last year, and that is at the you know paramount of how we think about programmings and new ideas. Basically, like how will they play on all four? And I think to be thinking of any ideas you're developing they should always think about how would this work on our awful you know service 
you know, how will it how will it sit as a box set? How will it drive younger audiences to that? to the service and to the channel is really key. Thinking about not just one area, like Laura was saying, how will it play in different markets? How will it play in different kind of um, mediums of watching TV? Cool. Um, so, I mean, I study screenwriting and we were always told to have loads of ideas, just be ready with all your ideas. Is that is that a good strategy or should you just pick, pick your favorite? Haji, what do you reckon? Do you want people? You mean, to so when people come to pitch to me, do you yeah. know, it's really, again, it's really, it's a really interesting way of how people work. Now, and again, that will come to your relationship with who you're pitching to. So I, I find that when people, so I, so there's, you know, without naming names, there's someone who just literally pitches ideas at me, and by the end of it, you're, I'm just exhausted, and I don't know. I don't know what day of the week it is. It's just like, it's a barrage of ideas coming through and nothing ever comes, nothing ever really lands. So I personally, what I find better is having one or two ideas that you really, really care about and you really want to, and you've shown that you've thought about and you've answered loads of potential questions already in your head and you've given it time and thought and you feel passionate about it right you I, I'm, I know you're going to be more passionate about one or two ideas than you are going to be able